what I just wanted to end on is just a, a final quick story uh, to tell you, I suppose, you know, you just need to turn those uh, lemons into lemonade. Uh, for those of you who um, know the story, uh, it's from about seven years ago now, um, I sold the MCG and um, they were doing some renovations on um, the Melbourne Cricket Ground and met, I, being the fantastic uh, modeler that I am, copycat, um, there's a guy, Paul Hartunian, in the States, who saw that they were doing some renovations on the Brooklyn Bridge and got a whole lot of the leftover wood and got it delivered to his house, cut it up into little pieces, and then wrote a press release and said, uh, New Jersey man sells Brooklyn Bridge for, um, it was like 1995. But ended up sending it out as a press release, got massive coverage, and he ended up you know, getting hounded by CNN, and TV crews came to his house and all that sort of thing. So when they were doing the renovations on the MCG, um, fireworks went off in my mind, and I thought, hey, here's an opportunity. I'm going to get myself at first. I probably wasn't the smartest uh, and I'd attack in the box, I thought, how about I get the bricks and I'll, I'll, I'll mail the bricks out. <laughs> <laughs> I went down to the wreckers um, and he said, oh look, the bricks are a pretty good idea, but if you head over to Will and the wreckers, um, you'll be able to buy all of the wood, the green wood, and also some of the carpet. So the MCC crested carpet that lay on the floor in the Ponsford stand, I purchased a whole bunch of that and then purchased a whole bunch of the wood. And um, When I was there, I, I borrowed a van from my um, dad and we went down and picked up, loaded as much of the stuff that we could into the car and they had this massive roll of carpet left at the end. So I thought, all right, I want that. So I said to the, the guy, look, I'm going to come back tomorrow. Can you just earmark that as mine and I'll come back and collect the rest of it? They just wanted to clear it out. For them, it was rubbish. And I think I paid, I don't know, it was about a thousand bucks for you know a massive roll of carpet and wood and all this sort of stuff. So I said, all right, I'm going to come back. The next day, I went back and he said, oh, look, someone came in and bought the carpet before you got here. And I thought, oh, this is this not sounding too good. And he said, um, the person who bought it said that they were just going to use it to line their pool room. And, you know, that sounded like a plausible thing. So I thought, okay, um, I'm, I'm still all in the clear here. And I had all of my material and it stored it at Mum's. And the, the timing was such that I was heading up to uh, the Gold Coast to go see Brad Sugars. Um, and Action International coach guy for this thing, billionaire in training, and that's where I met Ian. And um, while I was up there, like I thought, well, I'm going to hold off actually launching this till I get back because I don't want you know um, all the news crews to be rocking around to my house, and I'm not going to be there, especially if I got even half as much luck as this guy Paul Hartunian did. So I ended up going up to that that uh, seminar, and it was it was fantastic, and then. On probably about uh, just before, well actually day one or day two, I got a call from a friend who said, "Did you give the wood to and the carpet to anyone?" And um, I was thinking, "No. Why? Why would you be asking that?" He says, "Well, there's a guy. He's 21 years of age, and he's on. Um, it was like today, to, not today tonight. Actually, it was today tonight. And he's selling pieces of the MCG. And I remember at the time feeling uh, physically sick." Like I thought, you know, this I, I thought this was my thing, okay? I got there first. And I come up with this magnificent idea and I'm lying up there and I'm getting phone calls from all my friends because I told my friends before I went this master plan that I had and they were all saying, you know, this guy was appearing in newspapers and all that sort of stuff. I ended up getting back down to Melbourne and feeling, uh, you know, quite... Even though I'd gone to Brad Sugars, so I felt uh, six feet tall and bulletproof because it's one of those motivational type seminars, I got back and I thought, right, how, what am I going to do here? And I turned uh, what I think most people would sit there and just see that as opportunity lost. But what I ended up doing was I, I said, no, I'm still going to give this a good go. I started running little ads in MX that almost looked like um, almost like an editorial. And I'd just written up using some copywriting, you know, Melbourne Man Sells MCG, and started off small, and then um, even though a lot of media coverage had happened, then the Herald Sun picked it up. Then once the Herald Sun picked it up, uh, then it ended up getting picked up by today, uh, by the Today Show, and then they ended up coming doing a story on me. And I think it was just coincidence, and it was luck, I suppose, that uh, the other guy who was selling it as well um, was 21 years of age, and like it was almost sounded like me, like he was a young sort of entrepreneurial type dude, um, and his name is Pete Williams, and uh, he ended up selling um, the MCG and, and sort of, you know, running with that, and then I ended up following up, I still didn't give up and sort of gave it my best go. Now, 
I suppose the lesson to be learned there is one, uh, you need to always look for the opportunity and I, I learned then, when you have something, a good idea, you need to run with it straight away. And that was that idea of you never want to not work on your best ideas and you should start implementing them straight away. If you've got a good idea and you know it's cutting edge, make sure that you put it into practice straight away because on the other side of the world, someone else is coming up with exactly the same idea as you and if you don't implement it, they will and they'll make a hell of a lot of cash and then you'll be feeling sick for the rest of your life. So the best thing that you can do is make sure that you go ahead and start implementing these as quickly as you can. And the story ends quite well. Um, I actually saw Pete Williams at a, a seminar when we ended up catching up, and now we're best buds and we go rock climbing, and it's all a little bit weird, really, um, <laughs> because we had this is kind of how we first met, but now it's kind of like turning the lemons into lemonade. So there's opportunity in absolutely everything. Hopefully, um, I've just opened your eyes a little bit to some of what you can do online, and I think that just brings the seminar to a close. Thank you very much for your time.